The following program is sponsored by Capitec. Better never rests. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Insider SA, your guide to living better. Join us today as rising hip hop star Kiddo CSA opens up to his spirited cultural roots. Gifted new opera tenor Luvo Maranti and patron Lady Linda Davies give new African talent a global voice. In the battle against bullying, canine celebrity Mr. Miyagi is a ferocious force for good. Stormer's rugby couple Joseph and Nomonde Dweba get away to idyllic Elgin. One of the most famous brands in breakfast celebrates a century of get up and go. And buying an off-road beast is one thing, knowing how to use it is another. For those with the spirit of an explorer, few places offer more than South Africa and our neighboring countries. We're the cradle of a thriving off-road custom vehicle industry in Southern Africa, and a young content creator driving that boom is motoring and travel journalist Oliver Keohane. 4x4 adventure driving, overlanding, obviously always going to be a little bit niche, but in South Africa, I think we've got a massive market and, you know, the territory lends itself. Beautiful landscapes and people enthusiastic about the outdoors. What I love about modifying vehicles, and I think 4x4 vehicles themselves, is that it's so much more than just our top speed in a car. It's what can this car do? Where can it get you? And I think also just the experience that allows you in the same way that you can run through a mountain. If you've got a 4x4, you can go driving through these mountains in a way that you wouldn't be able to. So I love the journey element of it. So does marketing coordinator Jordan Dunn. Traveling to meet some of Capitec's millions of customers in the most beautiful corners of our country, he's discovered the joys of a 4x4. I'm in the process of buying my first off-road vehicle using Capitex Vehicle Finance Offering. I'm here today to experience the off-road track, experience the off-road car, and also find out what's necessary to build my first custom dream car. The benefits of Capitex Vehicle Finance Offering is that you own the vehicle from day one, you have up to 72 months to pay, you have an interest rate as low as prime, and that you can finance any vehicle up to 500,000 Rand, it's really easy. Browse and apply for credit with one of Capitec's vehicle partners or visit your nearest Capitec branch for more information. Also leaning towards an off-road vehicle is Jordan's colleague Pumzile Andris. I'm very excited to join Jordan on his 4x4 experience. I've never done one before so I hope it's all fun. So I hear you in the market for a new set of wheels. I'm trying to go bundu bashing a bit. I'm tired of the tar roads, just okay. trying to explore a bit. So that's why I'm here. I'm trying to get the experience before I get the vehicle. And also just trying to find out about you what I need once I get the vehicle to get started, like the beginner things, because I don't really have experience. There's actually not that much that's necessary if you've got a four wheel drive. Make sure you've got the right tires. It's gonna be tempting to add some big mud terrain tires on. If you're gonna be doing some tar driving as well, you've got to go all terrain, best of both worlds. Look at the kind of overlanding you want to do. Is it technical? Is it touring stuff? And then kind of adjust your suspension accordingly. And then something that looks cool and is actually really effective is adding a snorkel. It's not just for water crossings. Like most people think, it filters the air in your engine. It can actually help with fuel consumption. When it comes to building your dream adventure vehicle, Richard Keegan is the man. So Rich, when I finally get my 4x4 and I bring it to you, what's essential versus what's luxury? For beginner overlanders, beginner campers, I would say to make life easy and comfortable, definitely a fridge, a bit of a kitchen, you know, doesn't have to be a grand kitchen, and there, water, very important, you know, and some basic electronics, you know, charge a phone, charge a drone camera, something like that. Start with the basics, build it up from there. Every time you go away, you're going to realize that there's something else that you want. And before investing in a machine, the smart move is to take an off-road driving course. First obstacle, just a pretty straightforward descent. It's quite steep, it's gonna look even steeper when we're in the car, you're not really gonna be able to see down. But put this thing into low range, cruise down in first gear, engine braking so that you're not wearing down on your brakes for when you get back on the road. And yeah, a car of this capability, you just gotta trust it. It'll sort of float its way down. I'm a bit nervous about the track. It looks very bumpy and difficult, but hopefully the car that we're going to be using will be good for us. 
the guys at All Terrain have a great saying, fast as necessary, slow as possible, you know? So <laughs> always want enough momentum, but the slower you do things, the safer it is. And this is just off the clutch, right? It's not on... Off the clutch, off the brake, off the pedal. That's just first range, first gear doing its engine braking. Coming down was really smooth. I didn't expect it to be that easy. Is it going to be a different story going back up? So basically, only difference is where we cruise down in first gear there. I'm going to take a bit of a run up here, pull away in second gear so that we can just kind of have even throttle modulation all the way up. Also put the rear diff locker on just for that little extra bit of safety and comfort to kind of get us up the hill. But it's low range all the way. On this one, the equation changes. Fast is your enemy and slow is absolutely necessary. Your turn now. First gear, low range, diff locks on. We've got our spotter up there to just help us keep our line. So, okay, so wheels are straight. Yeah, and then just obviously flag turn following the direction of his. The car doesn't stop. Like, it's not even like I can't even take credit for this. The car did this. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's really amazing, man. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. 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 So, how did you guys find the course? The course was a bit nerve-wracking in the beginning, but then I started to see that you trusted the vehicle a lot. Mm. And I think that's really important, and something that I noted now as well. Getting my four x four is just to learn to trust the vehicle as well, because the vehicle has a capability. Yeah. I'm just steering it in the direction, so it was really amazing. The course was quite interesting. The adrenaline when we were going down and yeah, it got me interested in 4x4s as well. So I need to try this in my own time. Hopefully George get his car and so I, I can ride with him. Today was really amazing. I can't wait to receive my dream 4x4 vehicle. Thanks to Capitex Vehicle Finance offering. I'm really itching to go. Better never rests. It dreams of new horizons, makes a plan to reach them, and when it does, only pauses before pressing on again. Take the first step towards your new horizon with a chance to win a thousand rand courtesy of Capitech. To enter, reply to the competition post on the insidersa.co.za social media platforms and tell us how Capitech has helped you unlock your dream using the hashtag BetterNeverRests. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. Up next, Asia meets Africa in the seaside home of Lady Linda Davies, champion of the arts. Sponsored by Capitec. Better never rests. From fine artists to rising opera stars like Luvo Maranti, our most exciting creatives have long benefited from the support of patrons. This is the home of one of the most spirited of those supporters. My name is Lady Linda Wong Davis, ethnically Chinese, born in Singapore, but grew up in Malaysia and educated in America. Then I got married and lived for many, many years in England and Ireland. And in the midst of all of that, we found a very beautiful home here where my husband and I and our children have enjoyed 30 years of great happiness and sunshine. My then husband had a refining business so we, with the mine, so we came here a lot. And being a typically British gentleman, he's always looking for sun. So he was like, we need to find a summer home. And I thought, we don't need another home. But I indulged him. And we came round to this neck of the woods, as they say. And I walked in to this magnificent home. And 31 years ago, it was very run down. But nevertheless, we could see beyond the dereliction. And at that time, we were also looking looking to move over here a little bit more with our art collection from Hong Kong, where we were living at that time. And all I was interested in was wall space and volume. And I walked in here and this was exactly what I got, with sunshine on top of it. Along with all the natural vitamin D, Lady Linda discovered an incredibly rich wellspring of local art. 
Here we are in the living room or the drawing room. Here you'll see a sculpture by Nicola Ruse, a wonderful young South African sculptor. And this is one of her graduation pieces. And it is entirely made out of rubber tires. And it's based on a true story of a samurai, but from South Africa, he was a slave. And I love him because he's like my bodyguard, but he has the most gentle face. Well, of course, this is a sculptor, Dylan Lewis, one of his many famous leopards and cat series. And I rather love this little bird here, standing next to my dad, Dr. Katie Wong of the Katie Wong Foundation. A businessman and philanthropist, Mr. Wong instilled in his daughter a love of music and the arts. Well, the foundation was founded in memory of my dearest papa, and that spurred, spurred me, on me on to create, to create a, a foundation that was international. It's based in the UK, but we do work internationally all over the world. Our mission is to find a way to use culture as an exchange between China and at that time UK, France and Italy and Germany where we were doing a lot of things and to bring, I hope, more Chinese things and history and interesting art as well over here and musical talent to South Africa, to particularly Cape Town or Johannesburg as well. We've done many things here already in Cape Town, uh, assisting and sponsoring and nurturing, you know, opera, music, classical music and art. And I'm hoping that with Operalia happening here, that this will also highlight the great African budding talent, budding voices. Among the most exciting has been Eastern Cape chorister turned opera star, Luvo Maranti. Luvo's name came up and in fact at the launch of Opera UCT they had about 10 singers there but Mr. Luvo here was the one that stood out for me. Little did I know that he was going to be selected as one of the five South African contestants for the International Operalia competition. The Operalia competition is the world opera competition. It's there to help young talents and to, to give them an opportunity to be seen in the world. In a way, it's where the spotlight is for you to kickstart your career. For Lady Linda, bridging cultures through art starts at home. So here we're in the dining room. I'm very pleased that I have managed to collect some David Goldblatt. We have these two photographs of these little boys playing the violin somewhere in Africa. And that's, of course, what we do, the foundation for education and cultural exchange and educating the young and supporting them. And this is a Chinese painting behind me by Liu Kuo-sung. And he has this very special technique and it's called the Rising Suns. Behind this floral arrangement is another Liu Kuo-sung painting of mountains and sunsets. And these two fantastic, great 19th century elm wood cupboards. And above them are two lovely young men, mid 19th century Burmese altar boys. Normally they would be holding something, flowers or a lantern on this as they live just up there. And they've been there again, I guess 30 years with the occasional clean, of course. But for me, a personal great, great favorite is this extraordinary weave of a, like a net of, of wire of a coelacanth, of course, the, the fish of South Africa. And it's by a, a fabulous artist called Walter Altman, who lives in Joburg. And he, he's done this all by his own hand. And I knew the right wall to put it on because I want him to face the ocean where he wants to go to. This is a collector who respects the widest range of art skills, making space for the traditional and classical. 
The layout of the garden is, well, it's been here for over 30 years, and I've been here 30 years. So the land structure itself is very steady. It was landscaped, the house was built by the British Admiral, I think the last British Admiral. As you can see, this wonderful Indian Ocean out there. There's a second garden below, which is really what I call my lost garden. Here we have this beautiful lawn and this balustrade, which is very 1930s. So it's very red sails in the sunset, that sort of pure no coward. So, I mean, the house with these beautiful palms as well, and then this extraordinary pine tree behind me, that is very redolent of something Asian, Chinese, not Japanese, more Chinese. It's a very Chinese feeling, poetic feeling, which I love. So here we have a wonderful sculpture by a Zimbabwean artist. And what's so incredible about this is that it's, uh, it's one piece of wood. And as you can see, it's a lion with his magnificent tail. And then he's swallowing a snake. From its terraced garden to the sweeping interiors, this home was designed for entertaining on a grand scale. In the dining room, we had the rising suns. In the hall here, we have the moon, and with this magnificent display of flowers to greet all the guests. Eclectic, a mixture of everything, my background. I have lived and grown up all over the world. So the Asian, of course, is very intrinsically bred in. That will not change. But the European, the Western, and the African, which is so fantastic and so beguiling. And maybe once you fall in love with this part of the world, it's very difficult to leave it, and especially this part of the world. I've just had an epic journey. May Lady Linda and her home host decades more of South Africa building bridges across the oceans. Just ahead, discovering his roots, Hip Hop's Kiddo CSA looks back in order to move forward. Sponsored by Capitech. Better never rests. Hip-hop is one of the most relatable ways for international audiences to get the South African experience. And freestyling lyrical master Sipo Nkube represents the young heart and soul of that experience. Hey yo, what's up, what's going on? It's your boy Kiro CSA. I'm with the Insider SA today. I am all the way from the East Rand of Joburg in Benoni, a small little city. I've been doing music ever since I was 14 years old, ever since I could literally remember I've been writing. And it's been a journey ever since. So my dad is a fan of like different type of music. I can say like, if family I'm young, actually, right? They all listen to music, all type of genres from hip hop to gospel to house, literally everything. That's how I think how I got into music. Welcome to the Sadi Cultural Village. So My much. name is Lebo Khang, and today I'll be your host. I'll take you through the villages Thank you so to much. learn more about our cultures. Let's do Remember it. what they say we say a man without culture is like a zebra without stripes. Lesedi Cultural Village is a small, beautiful cultural village that is based between Northwest and Gauteng. It's a place of light and it started years ago, 1995, when five fascinating groups they gathered here to showcase their cultures as part of Ubuntu. Ubuntu means community, love, respect, and those cultures that we have within Lesedi, we have Amandebele, Amazulu, Amakosa, Babedi, and Basutu. As Sipo finds a wider audience through contacts from London to Los Angeles, his inspiration remains authentically local. The element of culture that I think I bring into my music, I wasn't very aware before, but I actually went with my dad, I think like two years back, Sayin Pumalang, you know, going back to La, like in Weakona, this is where you're from, what you mean, your surname means this, and all of those things like made me now want to start like, normal like Nyan Zingoma, probably put in a word, that's in Zulu or in Debele, that somebody else, or Weakasi can maybe relate to what I'm also just saying, because in the music, even with the storylines, it's Kulmangazo, normal Kulmang in English, right? It's still very much inspired 
inspired by the stories from Ikas. Even if it's me articulating in the English as I say, but at the end of the day, it's still African stories that everybody can relate to. And hopefully also as well, this can also inspire maybe a track or two, you never know. Life's easier since Kiddo signed with a major label, but he played it cool when the subject of cattle, brides and lobola came up. This is our first village, which is the Zulu village. But before we go inside the village, we need to ask for permission. So for us to ask for permission is from the warrior up there. Can you please say, Sikulekile Ekaya. Sikulekile Ekaya. Sikulekile Ekaya. Napapafasha Samweni. He is passing the message to the villagers inside that we have visitors outside. Right, and in this village, as you can see, that their cattle crawl is built in the middle of the village. They protect their cows. Yeah. To get married here, one man pays eleven cows to one wife. They say no cow, no wife. Okay. Many cows, many wives, and many wives, many problems. <laughs> yes. And coming this side, we have two beautiful ladies. Also, oh, I should have like twenty-two cows, right? Because eleven each. No, that one she's a fully married Zulu lady. Okay. And the one here, she is still available for okay. the 11 cows. Okay. The address code is totally different. Okay. We have the married Zulu lady and the unmarried Zulu lady. Okay. The unmarried Zulu ladies, they wear the short skirt and the beaded attire. Okay. It shows you, the gentleman out there, that she is still available. Even a rapper gets caught for words sometimes. That's when Kiddo begins to look within. My writing process, I would literally say, I don't normally write music, but now I actually just started like actually penning down. But like before it was like things straight from my mind. I'm trying to actually pen down more of my experiences so that, you know, I can capture them more. How I would describe my sound, I take inspiration from all different music that I grew up listening to and try and make it like my own thing. And that's what makes it special because you can only like, I think, interpret things in your own way and how you perceive it. And you can be the only person that's able to do that because you yourself. Welcome to my village, my Thank tribe. You. Bedi village. Okay. We the Bedi people, we are all the way from Limpopo province. Okay. The north, we are the sons and daughters of the great king, okay. Sikukuni. Okay. And to know more about my tribe, please greet them by saying Tobela. 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 Tobela, the family is welcoming us. Okay. As you can see that the men are this side and the ladies are inside. Okay. And right over here, they've prepared you something to eat. Have you ate a worm before? Um, nope. I've ate them though cooked, but like in a, in a like gravy. Mm. Mm. Nice. Winging it is what got Sipo noticed. And if posting his freestyling online has paid off, then so had this trip. What's really fascinating about my culture, right? I actually recently learned that art in my culture is like a super, super important thing. So like, as you can see right now, even me just doing art, like that's why I'm also saying it was, it was an amazing journey for me to go back and really learn about my culture and like indulge in these things and know that, you know, culture is your confidence. So to see that my culture actually resembles so much art, it makes sense where we actually at right now. Right, this is the end of the tour, but okay. not the end of the cultural experience. Okay. We still have drumming to okay. do and enjoy. Super excited, thank you. Sweet. Yes, sir. Today we're gonna teach you how to play the African drum. The name of the drum, we call it Jembe drum. Jembe drum. So the drum originates from West Africa in okay. Mali. I'm gonna start the beat. Okay. You follow me. So, now I'm giving them my taste of my own medicine. Got my own song called Your Mind. So it goes something like this. Yeah. I say, look, forever locked in. It's you and I, forever locked in. Take you out, show you these options. Oh, and I'm trying to find it, I'm marking. 
One thing that I've learned today about, you know, experiencing all different cultures, it's important to know where you're from because that's your dignity. Like, that's your pride, that's your confidence, and that's that's you. It resembles who you are. Like, you know, before being anything, you want to know where you're from and, and who you are also as a person. So I've learned that because when I'm going around different, like, you know, tribe houses, like, I'm seeing people being so confident in being Zulu, so confident in being in Bedi. So it's so, so inspirational, and I feel like it brings so much unity and also order in terms of just like you know living life so yeah culture is super important in kiddo csa the spirit of south africa is alive and kicking it just how much he will impact the art of hip-hop we cannot wait to see next up mighty mr miyagi takes on the bullies and a famous breakfast turns 100 This is the face that launched a mint-flavored sweet commercial in nine countries and had 36 million views in the US alone. Or maybe it's more the spirit behind that face which has the world falling in love with Lindy Peters' little dog. I'm Lindy and this is Mr. Miyagi. I'm a social media influencer and I could say I'm the momager of SO Smaller Celebrity Dog. It all started about um, six years ago where we had a special needs Pekingese named Lilu. She was born with a special condition that turned her blind after three years. And we decided to do a whole anti-bully campaign with her. So we took her out to schools and special needs institutions, spreading the word, I dare to care. And the message behind the whole program was, you don't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And by using a little dog that looked perfect, but she was blind, it actually reached the hearts of kids and even older people. Now, Mr. Miyagi continues the anti-bullying campaign, and the fact that he has physical struggles of his own sees a huge variety of people identifying with him. He looks perfect, but in fact he needs therapy. <laughs> I think it pulls through to the heart. When you take a little dog and you talk about all the jobs he do, he visits animal institutions, rescue organizations, frail care centers, he does so much. So the whole campaign, I Dare to Care, is still standing today. For anyone wanting to set up a social media page or simply photograph their dog or cat, pet photographer Jacques Smith has some expert advice. Animals are not like people who you can obviously impose and tell what to do. So it takes a lot, a lot of patience and I think also an understanding of how to work with animals. It's very important to know, to read body language and to do those types of things, to have them interact with you the way that you want them to. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi, sometimes he's difficult. You know, the, the whole model life, I think it's gotten to him. Um, as you can see in this shoot, he wasn't very cooperative today. But uh, in general, I love, I love working with him. I mean, who wouldn't? Just look at that face. I think the most important thing is when you do photograph pets is to photograph them from their eye level. It opens up their perspective of the world and it just helps you connect with them in such a different way where if you were just photographing them with your phone, looking down at them, it just doesn't look the same. So get down low, photograph them from their eye level and just have a lot of patience. Among the messages which Mr. Miyagi spreads is that animals with aches and pains or disabilities can benefit greatly from therapy sessions with a professional like Lauren Barham. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm a um, veterinary rehabilitation practitioner. I work with companion animals and those are dogs and cats and I work with them after operations. Sometimes when they're seniors and they've got a little bit of osteoarthritis, then we work with them to help them manage their pain by just helping them stretch and move and encourage more flexibility. 
Um, so Mr. Miyagi is typical of having front legs that are overloaded and overworked. They always throw their weight forward, so they have this upper back that's always in a little bit of knots and spasms, especially here behind the shoulders. He overuses his front legs, so that's his compensation areas, and that's where he now and again growls because I pick up the tension and the trigger points in those areas here. It's a sure treat to work with a celebrity like Mr. Miyagi because he's full of attitude and he'll tell me off whenever he wants to, maybe even give me a little side nip if I'm not careful. And if I don't read him properly, he'll also tell me off. But all in all, he's actually such a little character and he loves a good massage and he loves a good de-stress. Yes. So Mr. Miyagi um, does hydrotherapy because he benefits from activating his core with the buoyancy of the water and he does a lot more exercise in a shorter amount of time because it's only 66% more difficult than walking on land but we can do a lot more in a shorter amount of time and there's much less uh, concussive forces on his joints because you're going through the resistance of the water and he is 100% non-weight bearing so we can get a lot more done with no impact on his joints so he really does benefit from being in the pool for those specific conditions. As for his diva behavior, nobody spends more time having his hair done than this guy. Grooming is quite important, being so small. But to groom Mr. Miyagi takes a few minutes a day, but um, using high quality products is a must because of him being in the spotlight 24 seven, he needs to look the part. And uh, yeah, the chest flew for the ears. That's the main game. So this guy likes his ear floofs brushed out and then he's good to go. The snack box is made out of various nutritious treats. None of them have artificial coloring and stuff's made with vegetable treatments, all of those. It's healthy snacks for dogs on the go. There's snacks bigger than Mr. Miyagi or just as long as Mr. Miyagi. So when he feels that he's small but mighty, there's a treat for him. So <laughs> a lot of taste, peanut butter, strawberry, you name it, it's here. <laughs> For a chance of winning one of these brilliant snack boxes, catch the Insider SA social media pages for details. He does a couple of tricks. The famous trick of Mr. Miyagi is when he sneezes on command. So you can actually ask him to sneeze. Mr. Miyagi, sneeze. Achoo. 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 The boy. Look, it's, uh, it's really unexpected. People always ask us what it's like to have a famous dog in the household. We, so we say, yeah, we provide him the house and he gets to live the life, having everything a dog could dream of. So it's quite fun being named, oh, you're Mr. Miyagi's mom. Nobody knows your real name. So that's the that's fun part of it all. Normally we celebrate his birthday with an elaborate birthday party by giving back to a charity. Next, we're shooting two commercials and then there are ribbon cuttings of new clinics open. Huge golf day with the Springbok 17. So we're quite excited about that. <laughs> a Mr. Miyagi YouTube channel is set to drop soon and Lindy's just hoping it doesn't all go to his head. For a century, the world has woken up to a nutritious breakfast with a favorite brand. They've invented ingenious ways to enjoy it as a snack, on a bike or up a mountain. And this photo shoot was about to introduce two scrumptious new options to the mix. My name is Karen Fraser and I'm the brand manager for Kellogg's All Brand and Granola. Kellogg's turns 100 years this year and my journey actually started this year and it's such a momentous year to begin my journey and it's just been on the go. We've launched a few new products and it's been so great working on the 100 years campaign too. So today what we're doing is we're shooting the Granola Health campaign. The look and feel for today's shoot is to be as natural as possible because that's what our products are, is natural and we really just wanted to bring out that lifestyle element. So to showcase these products, we've chosen a location that's a more residential location with a lot of uh, big green space. So we've got a lot of space to work with, a lot of natural light, beautiful patio, which also receives a lot of natural light. And then this great garden, which has given us a lot of space to be able to do some running shots and some yoga shots and just some more sort of active stuff. 
can really bring nutrition to the forefront. In all of our products, nutrition is the aim. We want to nourish and nurture everybody. And I think with granola health, what is really key is that you've got a reduced sugar variant and a high protein variant. But what's great about these products is that you still have that great taste. You're getting both nutrition and taste from Kellogg's. Light but filling. They're the kind of fuel our bodies need for an active South African summer. I normally start my day off with a bowl of Kellogg's to ensure that I nourish my body and then I'd go and do an exercise. So today that's what I'm about to do. I think trying out activities is a great way to incorporate your exercise and I think you need to do something that you love. So trying to find what you love while exercising is a great way to ensure that you can still do it every day or how often you want. Today I've chosen to do an electric bike and this is something that I've never done before. I've done cycling but I think this just takes me out of my comfort zone a little bit and makes it a little bit more fun and I think that's what exercise should be about is something that's fun. We're taking Corin on a tour of the promenade just showing her some of the highlights of the promenade, some of the historic, iconic buildings, and just giving you a little bit of a history of Cape Town. So, Cora, now we've arrived at the uh, iconic candy-striped lighthouse. This was built in 1824, the first operational lighthouse in the whole of South Africa, which is still operational now. So wow. it's quite an icon in Moody Point. So the benefit of cycling, uh, especially along this route, for people and for tourists, that you get a lot more done in a short amount of time. You get to see a lot more. So, for instance, it's the pole of the promenade is seven kilometers long. It's going to take most people about an hour to walk it. On a bicycle, you can not only exercise, you can also see a lot more, go a lot further. So probably be able to travel straight into Campus Bay and back again for the same time as walking it. So Corin, take a look, go up the ramp, okay. and you have a look at the sculpture, the rhino sculpture through the, through the lens. It's so fascinating. Driving past, you don't see it, but when you look through here, it all comes together. It's been such a lovely experience being out here, being in the fresh outdoors. I've loved seeing all the amazing sights along the Sea Point Promenade. It's so amazing just to be able to do an activity and to be able to get the rich history of South Africa. As a keen baker, Corin's favorite is baking all bran oats crunch into rusks. After all that exercise, I'm in the mood for a delightful treat and the new cocoa almond oats crunch is definitely a good way to incorporate into some rusks. So that's what I'm going to make now. We're going to use some butter, some milk and some sugar, the egg salt flour and then the great cocoa almond oats crunch which is packed with fiber which is what I need after that bike ride. The first step is to add the butter, the eggs and then the sugar so that's what I'm going to do now and then just whisk it together. This is my second workout of the day, we're doing arms now. Baking is one of my hobbies and it's great that I'm able to incorporate the Kellogg's into this, it's a really fun way of getting your fiber in. We all have digestive issues in South Africa. One in two South Africans actually have um, digestive issues. So we've tailored this product to ensure that you get both your fiber needs and your taste needs taken care of. And um, I think the, the future of South Africa is really going towards, you know, the on the go convenience. And that's what's so great about these rusks is you can have them on the go. Into the oven for 45 minutes. Today's been such a great day, starting at the photo shoots, hitting that work goal, then going for a bike ride, and then finishing it off with baking. So I hit my work goals, my fitness goals, and my snack goals. As 2023 comes to an end, I think it's really about continuing on this healthy journey. So trying to incorporate my fitness goals every day, getting in that workout, and then continuing with my Kellogg's granola bowl every morning so I'm nourished because they're so full of vitamins and minerals, they're a great source of fiber, and the Kellogg's granola now has a protein variant too. It's so great, I think you should try it because you need to start your day the right way with Kellogg's. The cocoa bits in here are amazing. It's so chocolatey. And then that crunch from the almonds, even after you've dunked it, it's superb. Baked in a rusk or enjoyed in untold different ways, every morning can be so much better. Next up, 
Rugby's Joseph and Namonde Dweba connect with their new province, fans and property in Cape Town. As famed as it is for its fruit, Elgin is also dyed-in-the-wool Stormers rugby country. So while the team's new powerhouse hooker Joseph Dweba and his wife Nomonde were here to reconnect on a weekend away from rugby, all of this is still very much their home ground. We are at Luxury, luxury trailer. trailer. Yes, he has to add the luxury. A luxury. And it's a time for us to just reconnect. We've heard a lot about it, so we're just like, there's fun activities to do here, mm -hmm. and we're just like, one day away from the kids, this is a perfect space, it's not so far, and it's another way for us to just experience Western Cape as a whole. This was an easy choose. The trail is beautiful. We just got in here now. Lovely, lovely place. Um, couldn't have asked for a better trailer. And as it is, it's the dream. It's called the dream. The dream. And it is a dream. <laughs> it is a dream, 100%. We met on Instagram, we're both in three states. You I said hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know he's a rugby player because even when we met, he had lied to me about his age because I'm a year older than him. He lied to me about what he does because he said, no, I don't play rugby. I just hang around with rugby players. So it was very unconventional and everything happened quick after that. <laughs> Nomonde would discover that Joseph was a rugby player how his talent had funded his studies, but just how far from this game and any thought of such a life he had grown up. From where I started, it was quite difficult, hard upbringing. I uh, never had everything that I wanted, never had much. I'm a kid that grew up in a back room. Mom, domestic worker, dad, mine worker. So it was hard, but you know, I, I cherish those moments because I was always with my parents. They were always there, they gave me love, they showed me love, and they still are, still, still supporting me throughout my career. Now I'm here today, I never gave up. Something that, that I always preach to myself, never give up, now I'm here. Although born in the year of a democratic South Africa's first Rugby World Cup win, young Joseph only had eyes for football. I used to hate rugby, but I played soccer. But my friends were all still playing soccer. They used to tell me that I'm a cow in Como, meaning that I just, the only thing I knew how to do was just trap the ball and kick it forward. But in rugby, that physical presence was a blessing which saw the young talent kick on. My mom was working as a domestic worker. There were three kids that were there. They played rugby, so they actually introduced me into it. So when my mom was busy working, I'll come back from school, after school. So I'd actually start playing there, they would teach me. So there was three of them, they needed an extra guy. It would be two against two and we'll play touch rugby. And that's how I actually started. At a point where things started opening up, I played Craven Week and then I played SA Schools. And then that's where I actually met one of the coaches and he told me, listen, do you have an agent? I was like, an agent? What does, you know, what, what does an agent do for you? He's like, no, he gets your contract for after high school. And I was like, okay, cool. And that's how I actually met my first agent and we've had a relationship ever since. I worked in a lab for about three months and then he had a call up for a French team. Then I had to quit my job and go up there with him. I've always told her that, listen, please back me. Please support me. And yeah. she's just been supporting me since day one. Having to leave everything in South Africa, going over to France with me, yeah. supporting me, supporting my dream. She's just been there. The deal is when he retires, it's all about me. 100%. <laughs> when I'm done, it's when I'm totally relaxing, she's going to be taking over. Yeah. We tried to reconnect, we tried to do a lot of lunch dates. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been around for a long time. I think it's been like a month that we've he spent this site since the move from France and trying to also steal time from his kids because it's him, me and the kids. Yeah, yeah. So he has to, and our kids really want his attention. When they're at school, that's how we try to reconnect at the moment. Time away from devices brought memories of growing up without a TV to watch the Springboks. And now, Joseph is one. I know if I didn't play rugby, I was definitely going to be working in the mines. So working alongside my dad, 100%, that without a doubt. 
The day I got a call up from the box, it was a beautiful moment. I remember it as if it was yesterday. We were about to play in Toulouse and I got started getting messages. And it was so emotional for me. I went to the bathroom, I started praying. But before that, uh, I SMS my, my wife and I said, listen, babes, we made it. You he said know? we made it. <laughs> we made it. So it was not just about me, it was about us. And I was so emotional that day. He's a crier. <laughs> Ever since we came back from France, they came up to Cape Town by themselves. And then I was with the box at that time and came back, was with the Stormers. I was here for a week and then I was out again. So now I'm back. So hopefully now I'll spend some more time It'll with them. It will be one full month. It will be a proper full month at <laughs> home with my family. <laughs> As fierce as rivalry is for spots in the starting 15 of the Stormers, Mr. Dweba gets it no easier in any downtime with his wife. This is a fun. It's fun. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. calming. It's, it's really calming. We're very competitive, so yeah, basically, no. yeah. we're going to try to get it. We're going to try to see who's the best. 100%. Which will 100%. be me. <laughs> a pair of natural competitors, it was once the couple had their first child that Joseph's focus turned to playing for his kids. I'd say the thing that keeps me grounded is my family. From where I come from to the family that I've, that I've made with my wife, my two kids, they keep me grounded, they keep me humble. They, when I look at them, come back, coming back from work, as tired as I am, when I look at them, it's that thing of saying, you know what, you're doing this for them. And that keeps me going and that keeps me grounded. Prior to Joseph, I was not really interested in rugby, actually sports in general. But now, I think also having friends within the, um, the circle, I've developed a love for rugby. Like, I am now like also screaming at the boys, what's going on? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and I know all the players' names, so that's nice. <laughs> When Joseph is not in the field, he's very much hands-on, like we do everything together. I think he's acknowledged how the housework and the kids have kept me busy. So when he's home, it's 50-50. You're no longer a Springbok player or a rugby player, you're strictly a dad. In a city where their home ground is right on the Atlantic Ocean, these two are getting used to the water. The kayaking was amazing. <laughs> I carried that. So no, I, was, my gosh. I was doing all the work. You? <laughs> you? I love the water yeah. to an extent. Like, I like being in the pool. Yeah. I think being here also made me, like, love it even more. Mm. Like, we enjoyed it. I think it's just a matter of fear. Every hero has some fear. It makes them human. And we soon saw how relatable a hero Joseph's become to young fans was one guy that came to my school and he also used to play hooker for, for poker back in the days. As he was standing there, I saw this big mountain of a man and I was like, you know what, one day I want to be like this guy. And he also gave his speech saying that, listen, don't give up on your dreams. We come from a small town. We worked so much to do what we want to do and no one gave us a chance anyway. And I was like, he's 100% right. No one gave us a chance, no one gave us an opportunity. For that, it's just for me to say that wherever you come from, don't give up on, on your dreams because your dreams might put you at places that you never thought they would put you. If you keep on believing and you keep on working hard, it will happen. Buying his mother, Nomava, a house has been a dream come true for Joseph. Now the Dwebers are buying their own. Yes, I'm so happy to be back in South Africa. It's just a great blessing for me. I've been included in such a wonderful team and they're just growing. They're just growing by stature every time. Just to bring my little input that I can as well helps a lot. It's just going to make us grow and just keep on winning games and hoping for the best. We're actually buying our first property together, not like, I mean, he's bought property for other reasons, but this would be the first one together for our family. And it's in Cape Town. Yeah, we had to think about it, but now we're very definite that this is probably where we want to end off. <laughs> it's only the beginning for their lives with the URC champion Stormers, but they're already proudly part of the province. This getaway has been amazing. All the activities that we did, going around with, the, with Big Daddy, <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. Yes, it was nice. We enjoyed it thoroughly.